So this is going to be the result of the five day water experiment. So basically just a recap was the idea of this whole experiment was that we have some oil paint and then we preserve the oil paint by filling this whole container filled with water. The idea that the water and oil don't mix and the water help keeps out the nitrogen, oxygen, all the air particles away from the oil. So in theory, the or rather the, the hypothesis is that the oil paint will still be as good as new when you open it. So it's time for the big reveal and let's see. Hopefully I don't spill water everywhere. Let's see. Oh, still, still looking good. Uh, this thing's a little wet, of course. The technical difficulty of me tipping the camera over. But now the oil paint still looks like it's good. And I have a test brush here so that hopefully I can paint with it. Well, okay, I'm going to go get canvas paper to test it out. Okay, so I got some ready, some already used canvas paper, so I'm just going to use the back to test out the paint. And we're just going to dump the water now and see how the paint reacts. Mm, the paint's looking a little bit solid. Yeah, that's pretty solid. So I might have to add some oil, some linseed oil, but let's test out the... Oh, it's still soft and the oil paint's still very soft even though the clump just fell out. Let's see how it will look when you paint. Oh, still good. This feels a lot more like watercolor or acrylic than oil paint. But maybe that's because of the water soaking in, but still making a pretty good mark. Hmm, interesting. Um, let's see, I'm gonna get some toilet paper to wipe off my brush. If, if I just made a new medium. Yeah, everything feels really soft. Feels... A lot... I guess if you like watercolor... Oh, whoops, there it is. If you like watercolor, then... Perhaps... And you're... You happen to bought oil paint for some reason, then maybe... This is the medium for you. Hmm. Interesting. That's really nice. And you, you can't really see it, but I'm gonna try to make it. Huh. I wonder what happened to this pile of goo right here. Hmm. It could also be because of the canvas. Uh, paper. This is really low quality canvas paper, so. Mm. Look at that rich blue right there. Mm, you don't really see those type of texture on oil paint. Oh, interesting. This is really fascinating. Mm, let's see. What else are we going to use? Let's use this pile right here and see how it combines with the cat red. closer for you guys. Mm. As far as mixing, I don't know how I feel about that. Let's try cat red and a little bit of ochre yellow. And I really should be using a palette knife, but I'm way too lazy to go get one. Oh, it mixes decently. Wow. That's strange. Um, let's see, 
where can we put this? Maybe right here. Oh, I mean, the color mixing still works, I guess. Um, let's see. So, yeah, it still works. And the oil feels a lot more smoother. Oh. Probably because of all the water in it. Uh, focus. Please focus. Hmm. Wow. That's awesome. I wonder how the white mixes. Yeah, it's, uh, as far as tactile feels, this feels really, really smooth. Like, like you probably don't even need to put any medium, because I know some oil artists, they like to put, uh, like a drop of linseed oil or a drop of the Windsor New Medium to make it quote-unquote buttery smooth, but if you just submerge it with water, I guess, the water particles they do something to make it super smooth like whoa that is nice like it just has a really nice feeling to it and this is just the this is the um let's see if it'll show up on camera wait why isn't it showing oh there it is this is just the princeton velvet touch filbert brush Let's see if I can focus that in for you guys. So, hold on. Yep, there it is. The Filbert Princeton Velvet Touch. Yeah, and it's just like a regular $2 brush usually, so. I'm really surprised. I'm, this is really pleasant. Like, this is not like a bad surprise that I'm trying to cover up to do all that false positivity shit on YouTube nowadays. Okay. So. Hmm. So I guess the... So I guess the caveat to all that is that... So that is, if you have a big pile of mix, but there's very little mixing going on. There's very uh, little paint, and the paint will still harden. But if you have a big pile, like right here, where there's like goop coming out, then it'll be fine. Same thing with this guy. It's super fine. This guy and this guy is fine. So yeah, if you don't want to put your oil paint in the freezer, because you got food in there and food and oil paint don't mix because you know you're not supposed to eat oil paint. At least, I hope you know that. Um, yeah, you can just buy this little container that they have at the art store and maybe make a container of your own and just fill it with water and your oil paint will come out just fine. <laughs> Let's see if we can make that a little bit. But yeah, the, yeah, I'm really surprised at how smooth the oil paint is. And this is, um, this is the Gamblin 1940, 1950, whatever. It's like stu the student grade. Oh, actually, no, it's not. Uh, I think the white is the Gamblin 1940 student grade. But the same thing with yellow ochre. The blue was the Michael Harding the Michael Harding blue, Michael Harding blue, Michael Harding ultramarine blue, I think this is brown ochre, burnt umber, burnt umber, yeah, burnt umber for Michael Harding, uh, wizard noon cad red medium, and, oh, I haven't tested out the transparent red oxide from 
the Michael Harding collection. Do, do, do. Let's see. Mm -hmm. uh, it needs a little bit of medium. But the paint still works just fine. Well, we gotta make this video 10 minutes so I can get sponsorship in the future. So let's see what else is there to go over. Well, this is what the brush looks like now. <laughs> Cover with it. And so, let's see what else can we do with this. Oh, cleaning instruction, just in case you weren't aware. First step. Take the brush, take some paper towel, and then just pull out as, as much of the physical paint as you can see. So there's no paint on this right now, what it seems like. But once you use this little guy right here, it'll reveal everything. So I have very little of it left, so I'm just going to pour some water into... Okay, I'm going to pour some water into here, and I'm just going to swirl it all around. And as you can see, there's some paint coming out. You can see how the water changes color. Uh, let me try to focus my camera. <laughs> yeah, you can see like a little pink, pinkish color coming out. Not sure how well that's showing up on camera. Usually, because I, I like to s just be as efficient with my tools as possible, so there's still some left in there, but then I usually just pour it on here. And you see the little soap part breaking off? I just press it in so I can get as much of it as possible. That way, I get the most out of my tools. So, pour it. Pour it here, turn off water so we don't waste water, swirl it some more, and um, some people worry about damaging their brushes like this because you're pressing on it really kind of hard, but you can just, if you're, you can also, you can also restore it, that's what, that's why this guy is really good. You just press it down to make the shape, and yeah, you just rinse from there. And we already got 12 minutes, so see you later.